Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the second edition of Window Watch. I think it's been a fairly quiet January so far, but we'll be with you for about 15, 20 minutes or so. I'm joined by Dave Freezer to, to take your questions and to speak all things January. Um, Dave, we were kind of speaking before we came on, actually, about it getting up to halfway now in this January window. And not just at Norwich City, although it has been relatively quiet, um, maybe some some movement to come. We obviously know they're, they're looking for a goalkeeper and, and, and potentially a left back as well. But even throughout the Premier League and, and, and the Championship, even through, with the hysteria of, of transfer windows, this is this seems to have been incredibly quiet so far. Yeah, I think we're getting an, almost an, a little insight into that with the uh, just pure amount of stuff we've seen about Emi Buendia to Arsenal, haven't we? Which I think most people in Norwich circles by this point have, have come to the conclusion that it's just got a bit ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, I saw one story the other day of... I, I didn't even I didn't click on it, but I think they um, they had like simulated what would happen if Arsenal signed Buendia, I presume on Football Manager or FIFA or whatever, and and, and how he would do. I mean, besides the fact that Arsenal have just borrowed 120 million from the government because they're they've got such cl- cash flow issues without fans. I think because they like, the same with Tottenham have borrowed I think 170 million haven't they because they're obviously still so new into the stadium and stuff so because there's not a lot of big stuff going on Pogba's actually playing for United isn't he so they, the Nationals can't just go oh let's write Pogba to Inter Milan or something can they so everybody keeps coming back to Buendia and and that story hasn't moved on and arguably hasn't even really had anything that new in it this month has it so um yeah it's not not the most exciting of transfer windows but given you know the We've just left the EU and all that added complication in there that that, the clubs have got to get used to and the very, very much um, tightened cash flow for all clubs at the moment who uh, had probably hoped that they were going to get a bit more money um, once crowds started getting back in towards the end of the season. Now, knowing that that's probably unlikely to be until the start of next season. Um, I don't think it's going to pick up massively, but th- there is obviously always little bits and pieces going on because you know, we we still got plenty to fill this video, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. And um, we'll get on to uh, to Mo Leitner in particular in a moment, but um, but yeah, you referenced that Buendia story. I think um, maybe I I could have rivaled that because on 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 my uh, save at the moment on Football Manager, he's just moved to Barcelona, so maybe <laughs> uh, maybe there's a story in there somewhere. But but who knows? Um, we we have got a few questions coming through, which we'll get to in a moment so thank you for those um david did give me a little scare on facebook by saying he couldn't actually hear us and then he said it was his fault so it's all good um <laughs> let's <laughs> it's always scary when you see that comment come through yeah. um, let's let's turn our attention then to mo leitner and obviously his, his quotes that came out yesterday he did um well he did some speaking to to pa about his current situation at the club his desire to move on and that's kind of moved on a little bit today hasn't it yeah it has um the um, this was the press association um, who uh, have obviously struck up a bit of a relationship with Leitner's agent um, at some point in the last year because he, a few bits and pieces about Leitner have come out through them. Um, and I said, you know, it doesn't move on a, a great deal, but it is um, it is him basically putting his head above the parapet because we haven't heard much from him, have we? And And saying, you know, yes, I am desperate to get playing football again. My agent is looking at various exciting projects, I think he termed it. And um, it's just good to hear from him, isn't it? Because he's not been involved at all at Norwich this year. Um, he has, well, he hasn't played football for a year as well, which is a good point. He has been on the bench for Norwich a few times, uh, I think three games since the Preston game in the FA Cup last year. Um, but he's not actually played football properly for a year. So he's just out in the cold. As I put in our story, all Norwich fans have seen from him is him trying to sell lentil crisps or whatever it is and and messing about in the snow on instagram and, and every day showing himself working hard in the gym which you know is the bare minimum for for a player who should be looking for a january move um the same with Dermich, he's under contract until 2022 so you know it is becoming a more and more expensive problem for norwich that they are both out in the cold um but yeah a few uh, there's a, a little bit extra in in germany today that um the clubs from Germany, England and Austria all looking at him. Uh, Bundesliga teams as well, apparently, which seems unlikely, but also Bundesliga 2 and that a loan deal is looking most likely at this stage. Absolutely. And, and just picking up on that on, and, and the loan deal stuff, there was a, an interesting snippet in that PA article about Tom Tribal and his loan agreement to, to Blackburn. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's interesting that that's in that story, isn't it? I wonder where they got the information from. 
Um, the, the, well, the, the story said that, it, that Blackburn are only paying two thousand pounds of like uh, of tribals twenty two thousand pound a week wages. Um, but uh, from my understanding, I did a bit of digging on that, is that that was what tri- more like what tribal was on in the Premier League. So as we know, all Norwich players have relegation clauses, and his wages would have dropped. Don't know exactly by how much, but I. I, I think in quite a lot of cases it's by about half after relegation so you know it's still a, a reasonably small chunk and and that sort of shows what Norwich had to do to avoid having that situation with tribal as well to give in to someone who as Daniel Farker termed it is not necessarily a, a title rival but they are you know they, they've done all right haven't they? they've been up there almost in the playoff mix and stuff in the championship so it's pretty clear isn't it that somebody close to Leitner has shared that information because they are, want that to be sort of publicly known so that they can try and engineer a similar system to get him playing on loan somewhere this this January without the club necessarily having to commit to a big chunk of his wages. And with him, you know, he came in on loan, didn't he, initially for six months and then signed permanently ahead of the title winning season. Um, but he was one of the players who didn't sign a new contract after promotion, which suggests that he was probably on decent money already in the championship. And that means that his drop back down in wages after relegation might not have been as severe you know we never know the exact figures on these things but um yeah i just that was sort of a added context to the to the story as it emerged yesterday i thought yeah and there's also a, a snippet in there about him being in germany to nurse an injury wasn't there and, and coming back to norwich so all of this helps paint the picture of a of a very good professional um uh, of course we don't know contrary to that but um it's it's just interesting how these stories always materialize i, I think at this time of the year um let's delve into some of your questions then tony uh, has said on facebook hello do you think we will actually sign anyone and uh, do you think emmy buendia and max Aaron will both stay at the clubs two questions for you there um let's start with do you think norwich will sign anyone i think we can probably fairly conclude say they'll at least get a second choice goalkeeper this month yeah that that's pretty certain isn't it I, I said in my video verdict on youtube after the game on on saturday that it's not anything to do with dan barden you know great to see him play well named in the who scored team of the round alongside players like sadio mani and deli ali wasn't he so great for him so soon after he was on loan at step four of non-league with berry last year to to take a really big step in his career and depending on whether cruel can return two negative COVID tests ahead of the game at Cardiff on Saturday. He may even be making his full championship debut on, on Saturday as well. Um, but the issue for me is that Krull has just come back from nine weeks out with a thigh injury. He's a goalkeeper who has to kick the ball a lot. If the worst should happen, and again, you know, touch wood at every opportunity, um, he should get injured again. You wouldn't necessarily want Daniel Bard and John McCracken being your goalkeepers for the rest of the season, would you? You'd have thought in that situation, it's more likely they'd bring Archie Mayer back from Kings in because he's at least been playing regularly at, at a decent level, hasn't he? Um, but yeah, so that's the main reason for me. I, but beyond that as well, McGovern and Crawl are big characters in that dressing room, aren't they? Crawl is clearly a leader. He's an influential player. He's almost like a captain at the back, isn't he? And McGovern has had a lot of praise in even during the title winning season from, from Farker and Stuart Webber about how much of a good character he is in the dressing room, how encouraging, how friendly he is and things like that. So that's the that's the bigger thing for me, that it's, it's almost needing to bring in a, a big character. Yeah, absolutely. And um, as good as, as Bardem was last weekend, I think you, you would have some anxieties we'll say if he if he does start against Cardiff and it's probably a bit touch and go for Tim Crawl at the moment so it'll be interesting to see if that is the case particularly given how physical they are although he did look very confident and composed last week yeah. and as Daniel Farker said he, he has got the trust as well um we David McKen- COVID as well haven't we that it can have knock-on effects you know I think some of the Chelsea players wasn't it that Lampard had said that they've been struggling to sort of get their full oomph back and 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 Krull, although he only sort of had symptoms and, and was just a bit under the weather it, it's not like he's been ill or anything in terms of he's not um you know his lungs haven't been bad or anything like that has he but it, there is this thing called long code isn't it so everybody reacts differently and you can end up feeling quite drained and exhausted mm-hmm. by the after effects of it so we don't know whether that you know cruel might have that have that side of things as well hopefully not of course he's a, he's a he's fit young man but um yeah th- there's that element to it as well yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, Jamal Sells and Alan St. Maximum at Newcastle, haven't they? They yeah, played right, for yeah. over a month because of uh, they're, they're still feeling the effects of it. Even uh, Ipswich boss Paul Lambert, I think, is, is still feeling the effects of it as well to some extent. He was in the stand for their game against Swindon as opposed to being on the touchline. And we all know from from when he was manager of Norwich just how um, 
just how active he is on the touchline. So um, that, that probably goes to show some effect. And, and, and you're right, it is the unpredictability of it as well. I think David McKenzie has asked on YouTube, goalkeeper before the weekend. I think it's fairly safe to say now that's not going to be the case. It's either Tim Krul's going to be fit or, or we're going to see Dan Barden in goal. I certainly don't expect any incoming goalkeeper before the weekend. So that search does uh, look like it's going to go into next week. I think we answered this question last week, but we'll... Um, and we'll touch upon it again from, from Josh on YouTube. Is there anything to the swap deal story for Emi Buendia? I can't imagine any of Arsenal's players filling that gap. I've kind of heard about seven different theories, I think, as we said um, at the beginning of, of the show. Someone said to me on, on the Q&A on Monday that there was a story saying Arsenal dropped their interest in Emi Buendia. And I kind of caveated that by saying, well, to end your interest, you have to start your interest in the first place. So it's uh, it's it's a difficult one. But I, I think when you get to the stage of discussing swap deals, it probably goes to show that maybe the club in question doesn't have the finances to do the deal outright. Yeah, and and we see this a, a lot, don't we? Over the years, when Nor Norwich players are linked with big clubs, that that means you then have to deal with a different level of transfer speculation. If Max Ahrens gets um, chased by Barcelona, or you know Barcelona inquire about him, every single outlet, <laughs> certainly majorly in this country and quite a few around the world, are interested in it. And there are just so many stories and everyone wants to have their little angle and their little take on it. And quite a lot of it is just a lot of fuss about nothing. And that's kind of what Buendia has been, isn't it? There, at no point has any media outlet or any sort of journalist that you would consider to be close to Arsenal, like a, a David Ornstein or a John Cross or anything, no one has suggested that Arsenal have lodged a bid. No one has said that Arsenal have made their move or, you know, all, all that sort of journalese almost, the, the, the transfer speculation language. It's literally just been that Arsenal are interested in him, um, but Norwich want a really big fee for him. So it's probably unlikely. So if it's going to happen, it would be in the summer anyway. So there's never been anything concrete on this. And and the the, the names that were chucked in, Reese Nelson and who was the other one? Joe Willock. Joe Willett, that's it. Um, you know, they're both lads who have done pretty well for Arsenal at points and are both supposed to have big futures. And also, I think what's probably eased it for Arteta at the Arsenal end in terms of needing to get someone is, is Emile Smith-Rowe has emerged for them in recent weeks as well, hasn't he? And he sort of turned to their kids. They've got a huge academy system, which Norwich have almost become quite adept at um, picking up some of the players who, who are dropped from, you know, if you look at Josh Martin and Dan Barden, both were with Arsenal and released. Um, Matthew Dennis, they signed last summer as well. I think there's another one there, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so, yeah, that, and that's been working for Arsenal, hasn't it? Their form has picked up a little bit. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of noise, not a lot of concrete information. Yeah, and we'll file Max Aaron's to Manchester United in, in that same category as well. Um, I, yeah. all, all I would add to that is if a, a team at the top end of the Premier League doesn't have Max Aaron scouted and, yeah. and know about him, then quite frankly, you'd, you'd question their recruitment department. So um, there you go. I think that's those two put to bed. I've seen a few more comments about Lucas Piazon on as well. We discussed this last week. Um, from our perspective, there's there's been no developments um, on that. He, he may be a name on a list somewhere, but um, certainly nothing imminent. I, I've seen a few tweets about a, a, a potential loan um, that isn't something that, that we've heard at this stage. Well, um, I, I think um, that has moved on a bit, hasn't it? Because um, there's been reports in Portugal in the last couple of days that he's he is leaving Chelsea, but he's going to sign for Braga and that he's actually going to leave Chelsea permanently because he's been with them, I think, for 10 years or something, hasn't he? Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, that was one that we kind of didn't give much credence last week, did we? Because um, how, I can't remember how I turned it, but it was, you know, when, when you get a transfer rumour from Italy or Turkey, you generally don't tend to take it too seriously until, th until things start to build because they love their transfer talk over there, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they, they they really do. Um, so, so yeah, there you go. Lucas Piers on. Um, probably not going to be uh, coming to Carroll Road anytime soon. Um, just looking at any more comments. Dan Mayhew said, are they still looking at left-back cover? This is a, a really interesting one because it looked um, fairly... Well, it looked fairly nailed on, I'd say, at the start of the window that, that they were going to sign a left-back. It seems a, a bit more complicated now, given that there seems to be a few moving parts of this with Quintia's return and, and, and Sam Byram as well. Yeah, they're de definitely moving parts to it. Um, I think Byram is probably the key if he is back in full training this month and looking like he's back in contention, then um, hopefully they're all right to go with it. But um, as we sit here today, who who are we expecting to start left back on Saturday at Cardiff? I'd say most people probably still expect Jacob Sorensen to be there because I don't think Quintia looked up to speed enough. Uh, against commentary in the cup on Saturday that looked like a rusty performance shaking the legs out getting back to fitness finding his rhythm again 
um, particularly because it's Cardiff and we know they're direct and uh, they are one of the long ball teams of the division. Uh, uh, incidentally, I don't know if you saw the Millwall goal last night at Bournemouth, which prevented them cutting the gap to three points at the top, didn't it? It was classic Millwall, just punted a free kick into the box. Jake Cooper nods down the, the free kick and then Matt Smith, who Norwich fans know all about, just off the bench, flicks it past the keeper for a sort of close range. So it's going to be one of those sort of teams again, isn't it? And, and Sorensen, OK, he doesn't offer the attacking impetus that Max does on the right side and, and that Mumba showed signs of being able to do, although also I thought looked rusty on the whole. Um, Sorensen is solid, isn't he? Positionally, all right, maybe he's not comfortable all the time, but I think that run of games he's had, he is now in a flow of it. And realistically, he's probably not got much of a claim to start in central midfield at the moment because while Skip's there and Tetty is there, he's not needed in defensive midfield, is he? And I'm sure we'll come on to Skip and Mourinho and stuff shortly, but I would have thought for the moment Sorensen is going to be considered as a genuine left back option moving forward. Norwich are top of the table, let's not forget. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I, I kind of made this point. I think in, in the pod when I said last year it was an area of real concern for Norwich, wasn't it? Those, those midfield two. And now they've they're sort of blessed with with four or five options. If you throw yeah. Sorensen, McLean has obviously come into to a really nice bit of form as well. Lucas Rook potentially could be back, although I think he's been due to be back since uh, since about <laughs> boxing day. So um we'll we'll have to we'll have to wait and see on that one. Let's let's get into Ollie Skip then and Joe. Jose Mourinho's comments because from a Norwich City perspective, this is um, this is the news that, that everyone wanted to hear. He's going to be at Norwich for the remainder of the season. Yeah, this was nice. Um, Spurs play tonight, I think, against Fulham, that, that rearranged game. Um, and uh, I'm not sure who the journalist was, actually. I haven't checked who it was that asked the question, but asked Mourinho about skips. So that was very much appreciated from uh, from our point of view. Um, but a few days earlier than that, the athletic Spurs man, whose name escapes me, had Charlie said... Charlie Eccleston, is it? Mm, yeah, that's right, wrong. yeah. Um, something close to that anyway. <laughs> um, he had, uh, in, in one of his sort of transfer, uh, Tottenham transfer wraps, had suggested that a few Premier League clubs have already approached Tottenham about having Skip on loan next season. So that even if Norwich did get promoted, it's not guaranteed that they would be able to keep him for another season on loan, which would be ideal, wouldn't it? And, and you would have thought for the player would kind of, unless he gets a really good offer from elsewhere on loan, would be perfect, wouldn't it, to, mm. to get that first Premier League season under his belt at still a young age at 20. But Mourinho really spoke quite effusively about how um, how pleased they are with the loan, that he's, you know, fighting for a title, playing mid, uh, playing two or three games a week. So sort of physically he's developing as well um, and, and was just basically said, we are very happy with the loan at Norwich. But then he did also go on to basically talk as if Skip will be back there next year and he will be in their squad because he's a player that they really like, one that they see as one for the future and one who Mourinho has already talked up as as being a potential Spurs captain, haven't they? So, uh, And don't forget as well, last summer he signed a new contract at Spurs. He's, uh, his deal's are t until 2024. So he is one that I think uh, at the least they're going to want well, the way things are going anyway, he's still got a second half of the season and still a lot of work to do before the Norwich loan can be fully considered successful. Um, they're probably going to want him back in pre-season to assess him, aren't they, before they decide what happens to him next. And it depends how their squad evolves. You know, the, the, in that same press conference, there was a lot of speculation about Harry Winks, England international, not that much of a dissimilar player, probably not as good defensively as Skip, but, but he is tenacious, isn't he? Um, who's been linked with a few clubs abroad and, and Mourinho shut that down as well. Said, look, he's not going anywhere. He's in my squad and I want him. So we'll have to see how that one evolves. But for the here and now, Mourinho, as Daniel Parker and Stuart Webber are, no doubt, is really happy with the way that loan is going. Um, and they could technically recall him this month, as with all season long loans, they're window to window transfers, aren't they? Uh, and you can break them at that point and bring them back. But he said, no, nope, Skip's doing well. I'm happy with how it's going. We'll keep him there. And and what that does do, and, and building that positive relationship, and we know Norwich had a, a fairly decent relationship with Spurs anyway, it's why Marcus yeah. Edwards uh, came alone a couple of years ago, is it just strengthens that, doesn't it? it Norwich, Spurs will look at Norwich as being a potential club for them to send their best young players to. And that is, is, um, uh, a real good thing for Norwich City if they do progress, even if they don't manage to go up, then there could be the option to get another 
Ollie skip on loan next season, which which would be a positive, I, I would imagine, for all parties as well. Um, let's let's just finish on on this comment from Will Thompson. Uh, opinion on Abu Kamara? He of course has signed his first professional contract with a club, seventeen years of age. Um, I think it's still the summer of twenty twenty three. Um, a, a striker who was a defensive player, but since Steve Weaver has come in as academy manager, has has been shifted to um, to more of a, an, an attacking option. Um, I, I've I've only seen him play a few times, but of course scored a hat trick in the in the youth cup, didn't he? Which has now been been um, postponed for the moment. But um, good business by Norwich to get another good young lad um, secured to 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 a longish term deal. Yeah, so suppose from what I hear, he's had a real growth spurt, and that's been sort of a, a big part of it for him establishing himself at the twenty three level because. Um, I've only seen him in sort of substitution uh, substitute appearances. I don't think he played in that FA Youth Cup game, did he? That we that we uh, the, the two games that we watched at Carrow Road last season. Um, I think again, I think he might have come off the bench in those games. I don't think he yeah. was he was starting. So um, yeah, I, he's not a lad that at the moment I know a great deal about. But clearly, you score an FA Youth Cup hat trick and and people start paying attention, don't they? Um, so they've this is sort of carrying on a theme, really, isn't it? Of, of academy contracts recently. I'm a Bama Daily, I'm a toy. Um, they did give um, a new one to Shea Hutchinson, didn't they? Not that long ago, just uh, another another year to, to, to keep him in, John McCracken. So, you know, they, they're they always uh, keeping things bubbling along with the academy, aren't they? But um, he's one that I'm, I'll be really interested to, to see some more of. But there was news yesterday, wasn't there, that the FA Youth Cup has been postponed for, for now. Um, the FA has decided that... Um, until lockdown eases and until they consider it safer, that it's not a competition that needs to be played. So it depends when things start to get back to normal more widely, doesn't it? If it, if that's not until April or May, then they might not get it finished this year. Um, at the moment, the league games at academy level are still going ahead. So um, if they can resume that in, say, end of February, early March or something, then then hopefully the Youth Cup will, will be able to sort of squeeze in towards the end of the season anyway. But um, yeah, definitely one that looking forward to, to finding out a bit more about. Yeah, absolutely. And with these young lads, they tend to develop, don't they, at Norwich until they're ready for a loan, essentially, or to either come into the first team. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll watch his development with interest over the next couple of years. Um, last question then from uh, Dale on Facebook. Any news on Soto being recalled? If not, what is still required to happen regarding a work permit? Well, the, the last we heard on this was that Norwich would like to bring him back. I think he, he suffered a slight hamstring injury in the last game for Telstar, although I, I haven't checked to see if that's anything that's going to keep him out long term. Um and Norwich were in the process of trying to sort of work permit. Obviously, that's something that at this stage hasn't been sorted yet. But um, I, I don't know what your thoughts are on, in terms of Soto at this moment in time. But they, they certainly are trying to bring him back. Um, I think that's what they'd like to do, isn't it? I mean, Neil Adams pretty much said that to you, didn't he? Um, I, I don't know whether he, he, he sort of meant to let that, <laughs> that one slip, but um, he did, didn't he? That, you know, uh, where he's playing at the moment, um, Telstar, the sort of lower reaches of the Dutch second tier, aren't they? And he's a USA international now. And frankly, he, he can probably be playing at a higher level. But um, from from what we've heard, they'd like him to be on loan here, wouldn't they? And they think that toughening him up at a League One or League Two club is what he needs at, at the moment. Because uh, clearly he's, you know, he's had a go in Germany. He's been in Holland. He's sort of done the technical side of stuff. And um, coming up through that US um, national system, which he's been involved with from quite a young age, you know, has progressed through the age groups. Technically, I would imagine he's already got that side of things nailed down, hasn't he? So, um, yeah, that's going to be one that's interesting. But equally we've just left the European Union, haven't we? So that isn't going to be at the sort of t high up the list, is it? Norwich wanting to get a work permit sorted for for an under-23 striker. It's not going to be a priority in, in, in football circles, let alone beyond football. So it might not be one they can get done this month. And if so, it's not the end of the world. He carries on at Telstar, finishes the season there. Hopefully they get it done in time for next season. Um, you know, banging a few more goals and, and and he may even be able to just be in the mix in, in pre-season with Norwich next year, particularly if they haven't been promoted to the Premier League. So that's that's going to be one to keep an eye on. We haven't mentioned Dermot yet either, have we? I don't think we've had a question, but um, no. there is a little bit of talk over in Switzerland, isn't there, that um, his sort of boyhood club, I think this is almost a, a bit of a similar situation to Closer, uh, FC Zurich, that they, they basically said that they would welcome him back there's been a few quotes over the last few months from their president 
Um, he, he had quite a few years at Zurich. That's basically where he started his career, made the breakthrough and went from there to Nuremberg, scored quite a few goals for them and stuff at a young age. Basically saying the door's always open to a player like that um, for us. Um, and and he's done another interview. He's done quite a few interviews, hasn't he, recently, Dermot, which is good from a Norwich point of view. I think similarly with Leitner, it's raising his profile. It's making sure that clubs know that he wants a move because clearly he's got his eye on, probably unlikely at this point, but trying to get back in the Switzerland squad for the Euros, isn't he? So, um if he gets that move to the Swiss Super League, um, then that would seem a decent move. But um, his quotes are sort of quite non-committal. It's almost a bit like the um, the reported side of the story suggests that he's open to Germany, Italy, Holland, whatever. So it's almost a bit like he he's maybe a bit reticent to go back to a, to an old club. But that sounds like that's an option open to him. So. To sort of sum up the video almost it's hopefully from a norwich point of view it sounds like leitner and dermich have got irons in the fire and they'll be able to get them at least sorted on loan for the short term i think that sums up norwich city and, and where they're at at this moment in time quite nicely actually generally um dave thank you very much for for joining me thank you all very much for, for your comments and your questions um I, I saw dave leak on youtube said that he's just joined don't worry dave you can go back once we finish and you can watch it <laughs> all back from the beginning and, and and get it all in so make sure you do that um this will be available for you on uh, on, on all of our platforms to uh, to consume later on pinkin.com the place to go it may be um it, it may be an interesting few days as we build up to Cardiff and, and sort of try and get a, a, an assessment out of, uh, out of Daniel Farkle on Tim Krul and how he's getting on. So that will be at Friday uh, at his press conference. So uh, that's uh, well worth checking out. And of course, plenty more to come your way as well. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you soon.